Shipping a weighted blanket from Amazon was the worst decision I've ever made. You've heard of them. They started as a tool to help calm autistic people and people with anxiety and insomnia. Over the past few years they've grown into a popular household item, and with good reason. They're comforting. We pay just about anything for some comfort. Do you ever notice how that's most of what we spend our money on now, as single guys? Why do we constantly crave to be comforted? My life wasn't particularly uncomfortable. Not then. I had finally gotten back track with reality after the disappearance of my wife and kids two years ago. I'd sold our little house in the suburbs, gotten a cheap apartment close to my job, attended all the therapy appointments the police and caseworkers recommended, and gone back to work. I still couldn't sleep for more than an hour or two a night, even with the medications they gave me, but that was okay. The worst of it was over. Shock and grief can only last so long. I got one anyway, ordered the thing off Amazon. In queen size, like all my bedding, even though my queen no longer slept in it. It arrived ridiculously late. I'm a Prime member, and I selected the free two-day shipping. But it at least had gotten there, so I didn't send a complaint, despite the state it was in after its long journey. Not in the familiar smiley cardboard box, but in a shapeless lump haphazardly placed halfway on my front doorstep, halfway in the parking lot. It had been clumsily wrapped in brown paper and tied with a string, and possibly kicked the whole way here, from the look of it. It's like a quaint, rustic thing, I announced as I dragged it into my apartment. A present from Grandma, back home, uh, on the ranch. But even talking to myself couldn't convince me. It looked like a bomb, delivered straight off the set of an action movie. The package was beaten up, stained, and the rough jute string was frayed and nearly falling apart. It looked singed in several places, too. It took me two hours, three gin and tonics, and a hearty microwave dinner to work up enough courage to actually open the thing. The blanket was bundled into a poorly folded cube, held together by another length of the same string that had bound the paper. I wasn't impressed with its packaging, but the blanket itself looked alright, plush, quilted blue microfiber with thick seams, and felt like it was the right weight. It smelled normal, you know that clean but vaguely chemical-ish odor new blankets have. I checked the tag, wondering if I ought to clean it, but the ink was smeared and blurry. It seemed risky to throw it in the washing machine without knowing the correct settings to use, so I just threw it over my duvet and went about my business. At around midnight I decided to give it a try. I had nothing left to lose, I'd spent hundreds of dollars on my bed over the past few months. The newest and best quality memory foam adjustable cooling mattress, thousand count Egyptian cotton sheets, customizable filling pillows, and none of it had brought me a single good night's sleep. Honestly I expected the same to happen that night, but it was fun to pretend. I slid between the cool sheets and pulled the blankets up over me. The new blanket was a bit lumpy, but I knew from reading reviews that this was normal due to shipping, and would smooth out over time. The weight was immediately noticeable, and to my surprise, I felt comforted. When I closed my eyes, I imagined my youngest two had crawled into bed with us, and were laying on top of me, suppressing giggles as they tried not to wake me up. An artfully folded section of the blanket at my back became the familiar bulk of my wife beside me, and when I opened my eyes again it was 10 in the morning and I was late for work. I've never been so thrilled to receive a write-up. That weird chemical smell didn't really fade, though, and gradually it became more noticeable. By the end of the week I could smell the strange, neutral odor on my skin, even after a shower. By the end of the month, it had become unbearable. I took it to a dry cleaners, thinking that I'd been lazy because I was so enamored over my renewed relationship with sleep. I was ready for the elderly Korean woman behind the counter to judge me over the stink. I had my excuses rehearsed, work was crazy, I'd had it in my car and forgotten, and I'd had Indian food for lunch and forgotten the leftovers in my car over the weekend, which had amplified the smell. But I didn't have a chance to recite this story. She only waved a handheld metal detector over my blanket and said, feeling wrong. Can't clean, try spray with Fabrice. You can get on Amazon. I couldn't imagine what about the filling could be wrong, and I told her so. Sure it was still a bit clumpy from shipping, but Amazon had listed the filler as polypropylene, and all the reviews recommended dry cleaning. Metal, she explained, then shooed me out the door with 20 pounds of smelly quilt in my arms. Another month of beautiful, comfortable sleep went by before I couldn't live with the smell anymore. People had begun to comment on it at work. Megan, my manager, had tactfully suggested I check my laundry machine to see if maybe a rat had gotten in there and died or something. It was my last straw. I came home determined to get rid of the blanket and buy a new one. But you know what happens when you lose your entire world, with no answers. You start to cling to things. You hoard them, because you can't lose the comfort they bring you. I tried six dry cleaners before I found one who spoke enough English to explain it to me. Sometimes they fill these with glass beads, he said. The factories that make the beads, they'll lose a screw or some metal filings in the batch, and it all goes into the blanket. Machines and factories, you get me. Yeah, so what you can do is cut the seam a little and dump the balls into a bucket or the bathtub or something. Throw the blanket in the wash, hang it up to dry. Then you just pour him back in and sew it up. I told him I didn't know how to sew. You can get a funnel off Amazon for a few bucks, he said, and shrugged at me in a particularly apathetic sort of way before turning back to a pile of stained panties. I did exactly that. It took a week to ship it, which was annoying, but it was a bank holiday that Monday so the delay made sense. Armed with my funnel and a bucket, I pulled the edge of the blanket over the bed and cut a tiny hole into the seam near the corner. I expected the beads to come pouring out in a clattery flood as soon as I dropped the corner into the bucket. 
Instead there was a single, loud thump as a lump of something metallic hit the plastic. I peered into it and saw a gold circle, a wedding ring with a fingerprint carved into it, and an inscription on the inside that I couldn't see because a chunk of meat and bone were still inside it, but I knew what it said. It said to love's eternal glory. It was my fingerprint on the band. My mind went blank and I lost control of my legs, forcing me to sit heavily on the edge of my bed. The motion tugged the blanket over another few inches, and more of the filling came out. This wasn't a flood, it was more of a heave, like the blanket was vomiting up pieces of crumbling, dry flesh and bone. Like a cyst being squeezed, thick clumps of horribly recognizable stuff squirted out into the bucket. My oldest son's teeth clattered loudly against the sides, and I saw flashes of silvery fillings from the cavities caused by gum disease he'd inherited from his mom. There was a scrap of almost bleached white Hello Kitty band-aid wrapped around a tiny knuckle joint, and I remembered how my daughter had scraped her finger knocking loudly on her brother's splintered bedroom door, and how she'd smiled through her tears when she saw the special, fun band-aid her daddy had put over the scratch. I'd been sleeping for two months beneath the heavy weight of a thousand mummified pieces of my wife and children's bodies. The cops couldn't trace the package, even though they tried. The security cameras in my apartment complex showed an unmarked brown van with no license plate, which dumped the package directly from the window onto my front step. There was nothing to track. Amazon's lawyers provided evidence proving they packed and shipped the correct blanket. Let me be fair to them, I must say that they offered me a prompt refund. In store credit. But I won't be buying anything off Amazon ever again. I've gotten rid of my Echo, that was the first thing I threw out, along with all my new bedding, and I cancelled my Prime membership. Just for good measure, I threw out my smartphone and smartwatch as well. Amazon and smart technology are convenient and that's great, but it's not worth the risk if things like this can happen. It's the only possible explanation, after all, how else could they have found the bodies?